You might remember this neck right here. If you don't, that means you didn't see the video. And that's perfectly fine. But what I did was I bought a Harley Benton guitar and I were sort of unhappy, maybe you could call it, with the quality. But that was okay because I had a guitar I wanted to build out of it in mind and none of the issues the guitar came with uh, were relevant for that. Except I realized later that the neck was warped and I needed to reshape it. That was not very fun, but anyway, not part of this video. What I want to do is I want to make a body for that neck to go together. And I have the body right here from my Harley Benton guitar. And today we are going to make it into a semi-hollow body guitar. I'm going to show you how I do it. I've done it a couple of times before. It's not something I do every day, but it does come up. Mm, yes, if you've seen some of the Stratocaster semi-hollow guitars that, for example, Fender puts out, it's not actually... Oh, I have some hair sticking out in a weird way right there. It's actually not a very difficult uh, thing to do, even if you might think so. First thing we have to do is we have to reshape this um, slant right here, both because I don't really like it when the slant is off like this. I want it to be, instead of this, go a little bit more across like that, because your arm comes in at a more natural angle. It's also very steep, which I don't know if I can show you. But I think it, it needs to be a, an easier in. It's, it's like an edge right here. And the thing is, the reason why you have a carve like this is so that you won't have an edge. But this has just created a new edge. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just wait a couple of seconds. We also need that edge because what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this plywood sheet on it. And I know some of you will say, well, ah, you can't do a top that is plywood. But first of all, there's a lot of guitars that have plywood tops, even acoustic guitars. So it's gonna work out great. And secondly, this body is bass wood, bass wood, whatever you wanna call it. This is a very inexpensive body. If you have a nicer body and a nicer wood, you can do what I'm doing with something else that is thin, like a thin top of nice curled maple, if that's what you fancy. Let's start off by just making this a little bit smoother. So right here I have my electric planer. It has a dial so that you can't really see, but right there. And I'm gonna put it to the very lowest setting, not zero, but 0 0.5. And then I'm just gonna move it over this area and remove some of the, the wood and filler and things to just take away this edge here. And right now it looks a little bit rough, so I'm taking my grasp. Okay, so now the reshaping has happened and as I hope you can see, there is a much nicer, smoother transition down. And you could stop right there and use this, it will be perfectly fine. You could just redo the round over and sand it smoothly and make it perfect. And then, you know, put some grain filler and stuff on and paint the body. And you would have a really nice, comfortable arm carve. So if you have a guitar that you don't like the arm carve on or something, you can use this. But anyway, next step is we are gonna draw with a pen out this line here. We can clearly see where the round over starts because of how the shape of the body takes place. And we're just gonna draw in that line here so we know where we have it. That will help us add it back in later. So I'm just gonna take a pen, something that doesn't go away very quickly and easy, like a permanent marker, but something sharp and thin. And I'm just gonna redraw that line. And that's just so we know where the edge is for the round over so that when we go and put back to the round over, we don't run into, you know, <laughs> The horrible thing that can happen, that is that you are going through the side and the top and into the cavity. And so they will have a thin little line uh, that is a hole. So this is the line for where the roundover is going to be. And then we are going to add a mill or two extra to this afterwards. So that we are 100% sure that we're getting a solid connection between. We shouldn't have that issue, but we are going to make sure we don't have that issue. Um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to mark out. We're gonna use this for the round over, and then when everything is gone and the new top is gonna go on, we're gonna put this on again, and we're gonna use this as a guide, and then we're gonna add a mill or two around, maybe even three, 
we'll get to that when we get to that. The way I'm going to remove it is I'm going to have my planer go back and forth over the body and I'm going to use a bit that is pretty rough and pretty big and flat to just cut across the entire way like this. I'm going to put the bit down to the body size and then I'm going to use a bit of scrap wood that is actually from the top so I know it's the same thickness as a gauge to make sure I don't cut any further down. And I'm gonna start off where I did the reshaping, just because I don't actually then wanna tilt the planer and dip in or do something weird. Make sure you're always keeping it straight. If you could build some sort of slate and have the router on top and just have it go across the entire thing, that would be better. But I'm showing you how to do it without one because I don't have a sled that I've built. So I'm gonna have to do that sometime maybe i don't know let me know in the comments below if that's something you would want to see me do because that would uh, encourage me to do it okay so now we are just going to continue our work on the body i've sanded it a little bit as you can see there are some marks here and there that are maybe not 100 percent perfect but that's okay because we don't necessarily need them to be perfect for what we're going to do now which is we're going to hollow out everything first we need to know what to hollow out and we still have these lines here because we drew them where we weren't doing anything that was any form of reshaping. So we can move them in a little bit. And first we just need to make a mark so that we can make a new mark where we add our three mil or something like that. So there we have our three mil. And now we can just go around. And you can use your fingers as a stop like I'm doing right here. Some places, like up here, where if they met, the screw would go into the cavity that we're going to make. Because all of this, we're going to remove. So, we have to remove here less. So we're, we're, we're keeping this much on the side, but in the middle here, we're going to keep a big block for the screw to go into. A very easy way is to take something around, like for example this, and see where it meets up with the lines, and use that as a way. We're going to do the same thing in the bottom. We're going to do it a little bit different. So let's move on to the next thing. The same thing here. We can't just take this off because then we have nothing that works with the cavity here. So I'm going to take this measurement here and I'm going to add that here as well. And I'm going to have this go all the way straight up there because there's no need for some weird sort of round over. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to do the line all the way. And we can use this to create some round Ness here as well and if you feel a need to make a template and do this so that you can do this multiple times go right ahead it's an awesome thing to do okay so now we have most of it drawn out and i'm just going to quickly go through it a little bit because it might be a little bit i want to remove some wood right here but i don't want the picker to just be floating over everything so i'm keeping around here so this is what i'm going to remove and i would suggest filling in and marking what you're gonna remove because I have some draw lines like here and here and you know I could want to remove that a little bit there but I've rounded everything over and the reason why I've rounded it over is for for my router basically because the router is gonna move and I'm gonna try to create this edge I'm gonna show you how and I just want to make sure um, it all looks nice and it all lines up nicely and looks great I hope that makes sense to you I've created a cavity here right here and a cavity here. I haven't just removed everything here because I still want some wood for this area because the plate that sits here will have a bunch of stress put on it and so having it not just uh, screwed into the top but also into the actual wood that's underneath I think it's gonna be good. It's sort of the same thing as the strap buttons. Having extra wood where you think it might be needed. And the same thing goes with here. I'm, I've measured out where the trim is gonna sit and I've draw some lines and I've created these two bars right here and this back bar here for the trim and this front obviously because you need somewhere to to attach it and it's just like I'm just creating a pool right here and it's just because of the tension and what happens when you move a trim a bunch you know I don't want any weird structures I have built guitars without these but I haven't built guitars without these with the trims and I have created a, a tiny indentation right up here which is maybe a little bit hard to see but I'm going to do some overview real soon and I've also drawn out this cavity right here I'm not going to fill it in because we're not done with it yet because we have to move on to the next part which is obviously we have a back carve here for the belly carve and we have to think about the fact that that's there when we design this so we're going to do that real quick 
But first I'm gonna give you a little bit of a close up. I'm gonna try to show you how to do this now. It's gonna be kind of hard, so I might have to make a video about this. Talk to me in the comments below and I'll try to clear it up. This is gonna be a little bit weird, maybe. But basically you need to measure this indentation and mark it out here so we know where we can cut and where we can't cut. What we're gonna do is we are gonna use something that we know, for example this clamp, has one side that is matching up with the other. And we can just clamp it here. And if I push it up where the belly core and the, the body meet, and I mark it out, and I move it along, I can get very quickly a rough idea of what this looks like. Now, if you're doing this with templates or something like that, it's going to be easier because you might actually have a template for where your carve is going to be. And you can just mark that out as well. And you don't have to go around like this. But if you don't have any templates, don't worry, because you can definitely do this without using templates. I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit. As I said before, we don't want a corner where we're taking off the corner and all of a sudden we have a hole. So I'm adding another couple of mils just because we want that extra bit. And then we can use our trusty knob here as a round over measurements device. And I'm gonna do a round over here, which I'm gonna explain in a second. And then we mark everything again. This area here, all of this is going to get removed. And all of this is going to get removed. Now we have this area here and this tiny little area here. I'm going to mark them with this white pen for now. It's not a very good pen, but I can see what I've been doing. We are going to carve out all these and the router is just going to plunge right down and just carve out a big cavity basically like the other ones we already have in the body. But where the armrest is, we can't do that because then we'll plunge through the body because we're not, we don't have a straight end and where it goes down like this. We have a, a tilted angle and it's gonna go down and go through. So we are gonna have to carve this other part with hand tools, or that's at least what I'm gonna do. You can use some power tools, but it's so little wood that doing it with hand tools will be perfectly fine. But that means that we can't route there, basically. We can route there a little bit to remove some of the wood, but we can't route there to remove um, the big bulk of it. And especially, it's kind of risky because we want to know where we can carve and where we can't carve. But that's going to be a future step. We're not there yet. We're still on marking out what we can do and not do. Okay, so we have a similar problem to what I just tried to explain with this carve right here. If you don't understand, hopefully it will come to you as the build comes along. But we have a similar problem right here because this slants down. And so if we just follow along with the router, the depth that we set for how deep we can go will not be the same depth we can go here. So what we need to do is we have to route this in two goes. And so we're just gonna go like this and check to see where it drops off the body. So if we stop here, There we have something. So basically, if we wrap this in two goes where we remove everything here once and then we remove this afterwards and make sure that this area here is routed in a different way where we can get in and take short bits away at a time. So I'm gonna go over this area and route away the wood and I'm gonna use a drill bit that has the bearing on top like this. And I'm just gonna go deep enough so that I can create a border around this, where that bearing can sit so that it can go around everywhere here and not cut into anything weird. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna finalize everything and make it nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to route this off, but I'm gonna have it leaning, not on top like this, but on the side like this. And I'm gonna be super careful to route away this. And I am gonna actually 
go from the lowest point, which is here, which means that we're going to get a gap here where this is lower than the edge here. I hope this makes sense to you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Something like that, I think. The edge there is almost down. We will have to measure the thickness of the body. We can go a little bit more. Something like that. Now we have two. The bottom of this angle here. And the bottom of this angle here. And now we can just try to blend them together by just going across. Keeping it steadily in this place. On top of the actual body. Now we have a matching car follows the curvature of the body. It looks a little bit rough because this is not necessarily how you're supposed to do this. But we can take a bit of sandpaper going around like this for a bit. We will have this area look nice. As I said, the F is going to be roughly around here. You're not going to see it necessarily, but you're also kind of going to see it if you look closely. So neating up all of all of the cavity just in this area here is a good idea. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually finally going to start carving this here away. I've created a lip here because everything else has a lip. So I thought that would make it look nice. And this is very important. This is a chisel. You can see it's flat. This is a gouge. It's curved. You don't do any guitar building basically with a chisel when it comes to carving and creating shapes. Use the gouge. And we're just going to blend this edge here with this bottom. So we're not going to try to do anything else really than just getting it straight down. You can see how this is starting to become a thing. We just cut this off. Can use a mallet to help us. And I'm going to speed up this process now, trying to find some different angles for you. And hopefully you'll get a good idea of what it is I'm doing. But if you ever see a video of someone building a guitar and they're using a chisel for something like this, What's going to happen when I press in like this, it's not that it's just going to, you know, take out a bit. It's going to create a crack all the way like that, or that way. And you don't want that because it's not something you're controlling, it's something that's happening to you. And that's no good place to be. Okay, so here you can see how I'm actually using my entire body to do this. If you're just using your hands and holding the tool in different weird ways, you're gonna end up feeling tired and hurt in your fingers a lot quicker. You're still gonna get tired, obviously, because this is very physical, but try to do it the way I'm doing and that I'm showing with leaning into it, basically. I hope this will Makes sense. If you want, I can do a video where I talk more about it.
Okay, so now I'm basically done with the body, but I want to do a little bit of sanding on the inside just because there is going to be an F hole and I want to make sure that if anyone looks inside there it looks nice. I am thinking that maybe I will keep a little bit of the marks from the carving. I don't know. You can sand that away, but I'm thinking that maybe I, I want to keep it. I haven't really decided yet, but it's just that carving is something that I really love to do. It's actually the most fun woodworking thing for me. So I'm thinking that maybe I want to be able to look inside of it and remember the fact that I like carving. Also, the video footage is sped up, but it's sped up because I I sometimes feel like I have to speed things up because the videos will be too long and at least according to the algorithms, uh, they're sped up because of that, not because this actually takes long or anything like this. I don't really know how long it took for me to do this, but it wasn't an hour, definitely not an hour. I wouldn't even say that it, w it was probably under 40 minutes somewhere. So if you feel like, ah, oh, this is something that takes forever, you need to f work on your technique of how you're doing this. And you also need to think about things like sharpening your tools. You can't see how sharp my tools are, but they are really sharp. Here's the body now. I didn't sand that much right here, but I did do a little bit here. It all looks really good. I'm pleased with it. This might look more complicated, like something you can't do, but I promise you, you can. Now we're going to glue on the top. And you might have seen people glue on tops on guitars before, but I actually think that instead of having the body like this and gluing the top on, you know, like this, uh, you should do it the other way around and glue the top down. Because if you have glue squeeze out, it won't run into the cavity. It will basically stay put where it is. Just a small tip for you there. So let's just jump into gluing this on. And this is just regular, you know, you can get it anywhere, plywood. Uh, the only thing I've done is obviously I've cut it to size and I cut it a couple of, maybe an inch all around uh, bigger, something like that. And it's just because when we go to press it down, so it lies flat here, you're gonna need more. So you don't, need, you can't make a perfect fit. You have to make it a little bit bigger so that you have enough wood for the flexing of it basically so yes let's do that real quick now okay so this is my flower press it's a super simple easy little thing you have a plate like this that is perfectly flat and some papers that you can put in between you have this top here and you have this thing here that is basically a roller and you just roll thing like this until everything gets really tight and clampy and then you take a rod like this and you press it like this and everything is locked in place. We're gonna put this right here and we're gonna take our body. And first off, we are not gonna glue everything down. We're just gonna glue the top, not the side, because we're gonna do that later on its own. Put a bit of masking tape down, something like that. And something like that. I hope you can see what I did. Just a piece of masking tape there and there. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. Try to put it somewhere where you think things aren't going to be too um, in the way. And then we're just going to take our wood glue and we're going to put some everywhere where we want to glue things down, which is basically the entire top surface. So let's just put down some wood glue and we're going up to here where the tape is and everywhere else. Now, some of you might have seen that I had a little bit of an accident. Uh, in one area where I had some tear out that made a hole into the pickup cavity. I forgot to talk about it before. You know you, how it is, you, you do 100 things at the same time and half of it goes away. That's something that will happen. You will do mistakes and things will happen. That's just the way it is sometimes. And I just want to say you could do something fun with that if that happens to you. Like for example, that could be the hole into the cavity that you need in order to draw in some LEDs, for example. Yeah, maybe we'll put the LEDs into this later down the line. I don't know. I just smear it out a little bit so it's not too much in one place. So now I just flip this over and I place it sort of where I want it. Somewhere like that. And I put this on. And I put this on. And I put this. And now I'm just gonna start trying to wind this up so that it presses down everywhere. I'm trying to put it as much in the middle as I possibly can. And then the metal rod. And if the wood cracks like that, that's fine. Because it's just these sides with the over hanging. So something like that where we just get a little bit of pressure. And now I'm going to go around 
and where I don't see any squeeze out, like for example right there, I'm gonna put a clamp there. And I'm gonna use a regular clamp, like one of these. Now the glue has dried, I left it overnight because it was getting a little bit too late and I had some other things to do. So here it is now anyway and it has completely dried. I have no cracks or anything all along, everything looks nice. And when I look in through the side here where we didn't glue it, it's very hard for me to show you this because obviously if you look in there it's just pitch black. But I can see that I have no runs or anything weird like that. So, if you're gonna do this, I suggest clamping the top to the body upside down. I'm gonna cut away a little bit of this, just so we can get closer to gluing this. But I'm gonna stop where the tape is and leave this sort of the way it looks. I might actually cut away a little bit just to get a straight end here. But I'm gonna be staying sort of far away from it because I don't wanna cut away too much because we don't really know how much we need when we go to bending this in place. So I'm just quickly gonna do that now and then we're gonna bend it in place. Going around with a big pen that is also kind of fat leaves a nice even border around so I can cut this away and I have plenty of material around for doing the round over and matching everything up to the body you know making sure everything looks nice and also if I get some tear out or something Still, we have a lot of space for the router, so hopefully nothing will go wrong, but if it does, it will hopefully not be too much of a big deal. Okay, so the next step is we have to clamp this down, but there is so much tension over the area that we want to re do some relief before we do that and basically that's because we don't want to strain the wood and this is something you are gonna to have to do whether you have a solid top that you're trying to bend over or if you have plywood like I have what we need is a little bit of water and a heat gun and we're just gonna apply the water here and we're just gonna to try to take out a little bit of that tension with moisture and slowly we're gonna work our way back where we can press this in place and keep it there while the water is dry. So here I have the guitar and here I have some water and I'm just gonna apply the water right here and let it soak into the wood and just keep applying until you see the water lying on top of the wood and not sinking into it because then you know oh, we're not gonna fill this up any more than this basically. Something like that maybe and now we can see if we can start flexing it down a little bit and it's a little bit easier and so I'm gonna press it like this and heat it like this and now I can already feel how this is starting to give after and so I'm gonna put a clamp right here to press it in place no glue or anything just press it in place so where it lies neatly and then I'm gonna go back with water and with heat and basically trying to force it in place as much as possible. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes and as you can see, it's already starting to bend down. All I do is I clamp down where I want and I put some water on and I heat it up and then I let it dry and sit for a while to cool off and then I repeat all the steps again and again and I do it maybe with a minute or two in between. I've done it a couple of times now, it's been maybe seven minutes and we're already starting to see results. It is almost down all the way. It's been about, I don't know, let's say 20, 30 minutes give or take and it's almost down it's a, it has a little bit of a gap but it's also pretty flexible and easy going and now I'm gonna try to put in some glue in this crack here to smear it around with the back of a knife and then we're gonna just close this up and it's gonna be simple just you know using the clamps that we already used and just gonna run it along so here's the body now and it all looks good and nice and neat we're just gonna cut the rest around it away now with the router. So let's put on ear protection. Okay, so I messed up and I'm sorry to say, close up. I'm sorry to say, but okay, not that close up. I was routing 
along the sides and everything and everything was going really good and then I routed the neck pocket and I didn't even think to show you how to do it or what I did but all I actually did was just racing the bottom bearing the bit that I've been using looks like this and it has a bearing on the top so it can follow along with things and now I've switched to one where it's on the bottom and I did that so I could do some of the round over on the top because for example right here we have the belly car so the router can't sit here so we have to flip it over to here and have the bearing going along here so it can cut away and now everything looks nice everything looks neat and I've drilled two holes here and here I did it through the two holes that are in the back here so I will have access to carve these things out and I'm going to show you how I do it because I'm going to use the other kind of bearing, the one that is in the machine, right now. So here you can see the bit and I'm just pushing it down far enough so that it is inside of the cavity and can follow along on the inside walls and then I'm just cutting away all of the excess. Up in the corner where the neck pickup is right here we have to be careful because we had some tear out right here and so we have to be extra careful. Okay so here's the body right now and I think it looks really nice. We had a little bit of a dent happening right here but when the pickguard is on you're not going to be able to see it and the same thing right here I said I wanted to be extra careful up here and I was but we still got a little bit of a nick but I think that's okay because again there's going to be a pickguard over this there's a hole here for the cables that will go to the hole we need to drill here so I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out where to drill a pilot hole by using this Okay, so all the cavities are now made and they look just the way I want them, you know, minus a little tiny defect that you've already seen. And now you might think we're going to put on the round over, but that's not what we're going to do right now. We are actually going to put out where we want the F-hole. And that's because I have a template that I found on Google, <laughs> just Googling Stratocaster, you know, F-hole template. But don't Google just F-hole because... You know, Google can be strange when it comes to helping you find something, but Stratocaster F-hole template should be safe. And it's actually easier to line up with an edge that isn't round over because then you know where the edge actually is because you have an edge. A round over is sort of removing the edge. Okay, so I told you that I was going to use a template, but the template didn't fit this body because it was for a fender and this is obviously not a fender and the difference was actually so big that what I had to do was scan the body into the computer and overlay the template and put the f-hole approximately where I think it should go and so yeah what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna cut along and score this into the body so that I know exactly where I want to cut things Now I'm gonna just fill in with a little bit of permanent marker. And now we can remove the tape and the template. And now I'm gonna use my tiny little router that has a very small little bit. It's not plugged in, so I can touch it. This is what I use when I do inlay work. I'm gonna use this to cut out the F-hole. Okay, so here I have a hole and I'm just gonna put my mini router on top of it and put the bit down so it cuts through it and then just go along and remove all of the blast basically and that's gonna be it. it's gonna take some time and I'm gonna go slow but hopefully it will turn out great I have three different files I'm gonna use a round file right here a half moon file right here and a square and I'm basically just gonna go over the area and trying to clean it up I, so I have a round over bit in the machine right now and I'm just going along everywhere. I match it up to the edge of the body so that it won't cut into the top because it has a little bit of an edge on the top, the, the bit itself. So I make sure I never go that far in to it. And I'm using my depth stop to help me align everything so it goes back the way it was when I did the first cut so that we don't have anything that is mismatching.
Now you all probably know that you could go around over, but you can't do it with the machine basically because it won't allow it because the tilt of the whole machine will push the bearing from the side in an angle into the body. So we have to take the rasp and try to match everything up by hand. Okay, so here's the body right now and it needs a little bit of sanding it needs some grain filler primer things like that i'm gonna do that off camera let me know in the comments below if you have any cool ideas for a collar because i haven't decided yet my local hardware store has a sparkle pink that i think looks kind of nice i'm not 100 percent sure about it so i'm i don't know I'm thinking something burgundy mist and it looks a little bit like burgundy mist, but it's not 100% and so I'm thinking You know to look for something else, but I don't know if you have any cool ideas Let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear them and maybe the color you say will happen to be the one that this guitar gets because I'm not gonna do this immediately I'm gonna take a break and do some other things and so there will be plenty of time to even order some colors maybe anyway thanks so much for watching if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing if you like the video please like it uh, it really helps me out especially on videos that are longer and that i'm going into more details like the video you've just been watching if you've been watching through it it uh, it's not really good for the channel for me to make long videos but I also feel like I want to show you all the steps. So press the like button and leave me a nice comment below <laughs> or something. And I would very much appreciate it. I would love for this channel to reach a thousand subscriber before the end of the year. Uh, so if you're not subscribed, please do so. It would make me happy. Until next time, stay awesome and cool. And go and make a semi-hollow guitar. It doesn't have to be a Strat. It could be anything you like. They are awesome and fun guitars. I have a couple and I like them and if you don't have it you're missing out on something really special. So go and make yourself a semi-hollow guitar because you're gonna love it. Again here's the body and it's coming right for you. Ah!